Hello everyone, Vicki Verley here, the Rock and Roll Prophetess. Today we're going to be looking at the month of April for all 12 signs. We'll dive into some of the astrology, which there's a lot of, the eclipse season, uh, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, so lots going on. And we're going to do some tarot with Animal Totem card, and we're going to look at lots of love, lots of answers, and lots of proverbs. Before we get started, I just want to let you know my name is Vicki Burley, and I'm the author of Tarot in the Modern World, as well as three channeled books called the Transmissions for Humanity series. I also create decks and do all sorts of other cool stuff. If you want to learn more, go or get a reading from me, you can go to my website, VickiBurley.com. I will never message you through social media about any kind of readings or anything of the sort. And you are watching the Rock and Roll Prophetess on YouTube. If you enjoy this content, I would love it if you would hit the, at least hit that like button to counteract some of the trolls that are out there. Okay, well let's first of all go over some of the astrology because there certainly is oh, quite a bit. This is eclipse season and I want to also remember to wish happy birthday to all the Aries and Taurus out there. We're kicking off the first of the month with the Mercury turning retrograde at 27 degrees of Aries. So this whole month I was going to launch my Kickstarter and my deck and I'm like, dang, it's Mercury retrograde. I guess I'm going to wait a little while. And then we're also coming off on the 25th of last month. I didn't mark it on here, but the 25th of March we're having this big lunar eclipse, which is the first part of the eclipse season. And then on the 8th of April... We have the solar eclipse, the new moon solar eclipse happening at 19 degrees of Aries, 24, 2.21 p.m. Eastern, but times will vary. This eclipse is impactful for the United States because it's traveling. It's, they're calling it the Great American Eclipse Part 2. Then we move on to the 20th, when we're going to have the big Jupiter-Uranus conjunction at 21 degrees of Taurus. Now this happens every so often. Jupiter will conjunct Uranus, I think, every 12 years, but it hasn't happened in the sign of Taurus since all the way back to the 1930s. So this is definitely blasting in some new energy, and we'll take a look at that. Then on the 23rd, we're going to have a full moon in Scorpio at 4 degrees of Scorpio, 18. And then on the 25th, finally, at the, almost the very end of the month, Mercury goes direct. So Mercury's going to be retrograde nearly the entire month, from the 1st all the way through the 25th. So this is going to be, the guide just said, a, a month to remember. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty then, let's go on. The decks that we're going to use, Rock and Roll Tarot, Rock and Roll Tarot is always... Um, then we're going to pull cards from the Hanson Roberts, my old favorite. Then we're going to pull our Animal Totem from the Beast Mistress Animal Oracle cards. You can find links to all this stuff down in the, pers uh, not prescription, but uh, not even subscription, down in the description of the video. Okay, without further ado, let's get started and go sign by sign. First with the sign of Aries. Well, this is it, Aries. You know, this new moon eclipse falls in your sign. It's super powerful. What are you trying to manifest? Happy birthday to, if you're having your solar return, that's great. That's your birthday day. You may be a late March uh, Aries, but even if you're a late March Aries and your birthday's not in April, this new moon solar eclipse in your sign, extremely, extremely powerful on the 8th. Get your intentions, set your intentions, make your list, get straight about what you want to create for the upcoming year because you have this turbo-powered, new moon in your sign in the form of the Aries Eclipse. Let's cut three cards for our Aries. So for the top portion, we've got the Empress. Somebody could be turning up pregnant. Followed by the Two of Cups, which is the Soulmate card. Followed by the Seven of Cups, which is the Dreaming New Reality. Well, yeah, and also, you know, this Eclipse energy, Dreaming a New Reality, could be big. But let's get three more cards from the Hanson Roberts, and then we'll dive in deeper into connect it, tie it all together, and see what's up for Aries. We've got the Seven of Cups again. Double Seven of Cups there, okay. Next we have the Ten of Cups. Wow, Aries, look at this reading. Look at the light shifting and changing, too. I mean, I tried really hard. I got all the windows shades down, but there's still some light creeping in somewhere. And isn't that interesting, because we're dealing with an eclipse, so there's still this light, you know, the, the aurora around the sunlight. But, wow, is this a time, you know, the Seven of Cups is here twice, so this is definitely be, you are such a powerful creator at this time. You're a powerful creator. You're a powerful manifester, no matter what. 
if you're getting this downer energy or negative energy, then you could be creating that. So let's make sure that we get ourselves aligned with what we want. You know, put a smile on your face, even if you don't feel like it. Because when you put a smile on your face, it's hard to be angry. It's hard to be down. Uh, Ten of Cups is here, which is known as the marriage card. I mean, and they got the soulmate rooted down by this Ten of Cups. So definitely, as many of you may be having major love stuff going on. You may find the love of your dream. You may, if you've been wanting to start a family with this Empress, you know, it's just like in Baby Makes Three. And this card also does have the, the children on there. You know, you've got that Empress energy. You've got that, that beautiful, abundant Empress is pregnancy, but it's also fruitfulness. It's also, calm. Ten of Cups is a culmination. And the Empress is also a culmination of sorts. So things are coming to a culmination, but you're setting your course right now in this Aries New Moon Eclipse here. Eight of Cups is here, so think, I mean, Eight of Rods, things are going to really start moving. Again, though, you know, the Mercury is retrograde also in your sign. So, you know, you'll, you'll definitely feel the effects of that Mercury retrograde as well. So be aware of that. You know, you, I, the, the tendency often of the Aries energy is just to rush straight on right into it. I'm hearing straight on by heart. Straight on for you. You made my life. Now I'm stronger. Now I'm coming through. Straight on. Well, I'm definitely no Ann Wilson, but you get the gist. Now you're stronger. Now you're coming through. Yes, you're so strong at this time of the year. The Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, if your Aries rising, that's going to be in your second house of money and finance. So that could also be a big boost to, to that area of your life as well. But things are really moving. Things are These dreams that you've been dreaming, that you've been visualizing, it feels like they're all just kind of really falling in place for you at this time. And you're definitely sitting in this abundance. There's enough to share, though. With the Two of Cups and the Ten of Cups, you're not there alone. This is a time of sharing partnerships love relationships, whatever kind of partnerships it might be. Uh, let's take a look and get your animal tone for our Aries. you got the rat. So be aware, you know, sometimes there are people who aren't necessarily, you know, on your side. But I want to say again, the, this Seven of Cups just really keeps grabbing me. With your visual, visualizations and that, whatever any rat, quote-unquote rat, is trying to do to you, or trying to interfere, or whatever the case may be, they're not going to be successful, because you are just creating your reality, and the guy just said you're going to leave them in the dust. <laughs> All right, let's see. So the rat energy, sneak Sneaking, slinking, hiding, stealing, fear, lack, hoarding, squalor, surviving in harsh environments, release what no longer serves you. Well, yeah, leading up to the 8th, we're still under the influence of the Libra eclipse, the full moon eclipse in your other house of 7th house of partnership. So you do want to release what no longer serves you. I'm just trying to get our lots of love. We're going to pull our lots. First, we're going to pull the lots of love for Aries for April. You've got beautiful, yeah, it really, I mean, you've got a beautiful spread here, too. I think that card is just, you know, actually perfect for that. Now let's pull your lots of answers, which is like a yes, no, maybe kind of a thing for your question. It says unsure, so unsure at this time. And then last but not least, we've got the uh, lots of proverbs. What we are, what we repeatedly do. Yeah, that is so true. And this is a time to really break out of those old paradigms, to break out of those old <sighs> repeated patterns that you just do over and over again. This is a time when you could really turn a corner in your life and head in a new direction. So it's super powerful energy, Aries, and it's all about you. I mean, it's really all about you right now. Hey everybody, I'm not offering any special readings unless you're watching this at the very end of the month of March. Then you maybe can get it on the Aries Ingress reading. But I do have various readings available on my site on VickiBurley.com. And I also offer weekly tarot and astrology over on Patreon. So if that interests you, you can check it out. Now we're going to move on to the sign of Taurus. Well, Taurus, you know, this 20th, that's the big day for you. The Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, it's happening in your sign. It's, this hasn't occurred in your sign since the 1930s. So maybe some of you, maybe some of you were alive that are watching. But I, I, I would guess that if you were alive during that time, you were just a small child or a baby. So this is a real kind of a new exploring of energy for everyone on some level. 
but it's in your sign. Jupiter is that great attractor. Jupiter's only going to be in your sign for another month or so, or well, actually till May, end of May. And then it's going to be gone for another 12 years. This Uranus energy I'm feeling for Tauruses, this could be something coming up. Like you could maybe, if you've, if you've been saying for the last year, yeah, Jupiter's in your sign, well, it's like, well, I don't see anything happening. What's happening? This could be the big reveal for Tauruses, you know, the big reveal of here's what's your, here's your gift, here's what the universe wants you to see, what is being shown to you. Here's the opportunity for Tauruses to get what you want, to get what's best for you, or what you've been, maybe in a way that you haven't really thought of. Because Taurus says you can be really single-minded with that Taurus the Bull energy. You, know, you can be very single-minded and huff and puff and just be in your mode of just, I'm going to plow my way through it and that. But, the, you know, with the Iranian energy, the Uranus energy is trying to show you something, trying to show you some alternative timelines, some alternative roads to travel on, some alternative pathways. So this could be a time when that could really come to the forefront and you could really just see clearly what it's all about. Okay, let's see here. We've got the Empress. Empress was in the last reading, and so is the Ten of Cups, but they're swapped out from the other decks. So I don't know if some of you have Aries too, Aries Sun Rising, because, you know, always do watch your Sun Rising Moon, all three, to get more insights into the whole thing. Well, you are the second, like I just said, Aries, you're the second, after Aries, Taurus, you are the second uh, to get the Ten of Cups and the Empress. So, Maybe getting married, having a child. If you're trying to start a family, that could absolutely be happening. Ace of Pentacles and Page of Pentacles, though. This feels more like, um, you know, this is more about the uh, news coming about money. And I just realized I forgot to mark down when the uh, sun moves into Taurus. There was so much going on here. So let me go ahead and just check it real quick, and then we're going to add it to the... My little calendar over here that's going to be on the 19th the day before the day before this whole thing on the 19th the sun will go into aries uh the sun goes into i mean taurus excuse me so this is a big day too because when this when the sun enters your no matter where you are if, if it's your birthday at the end of april or you're a may taurus that when it hits those zero marks those ingress moments ace that new beginning those are always very powerful and very impactful. And it's coming off the heels, uh, or right, the Jupiter Uranus follows right behind it. So that's super powerful. As the sun, because the news is coming in the time of Earth, so that's going to be after we move into here, you're going to get some kind of news that's going to make everybody happy. It's happiness for the whole family. Maybe you're going to get that, be able to move or do that re relocation, or maybe you're going to be able to do that trip. You know, the moon on here also could be talking again about this, um, the Aries eclipse over here on the 8th. And this is the Eight of Cups, too. Eight, and it's on the Eighth, and it's, it depicts this moon. So you may get that n big break, that big news that, hey, starting on the at next month or starting on the 20th when the sun's in Taurus, guess what, Taurus? You're going to have this big culmination of happiness, joy, and an elation with the Ten of Cups that you've been waiting for, that you've been, you know, you've been, st the strength card, even though there's a lion on it, it's often associated with Leo, it reminds me a lot of the Taurus energy, because you can, you can be very strong, patient, enduring, this is all the energy of the Tor of the strength card, because the Leo, the lion is on there, and it sometimes is associated with Leo, well, it's actually another eight, too, and did you note that, eight, so we've got that eighth, that solar eclipse, this feels like it may be something that perhaps some of you have been waiting on all the way back from Leo time, back in August, or may involve a Leo. Maybe you're involved with a Leo in this endeavor, or whatever it is. But a lot of love and happiness. If you've been wanting to start a family, I can totally see that happening. But the Empress is abundance on a lot of different levels. It's not just about pregnancy. And especially when you've got these pentacle cards showing up, this could be some kind of big project. Some of you may be completing some big project and being ready to move on, like a you know, book that you were writing or something like that. Like, oh, I got the book done, now let's go, you know. Now I can move on to my next my next chapter. All right, let's see what the animal totem is. The rabbit. So, I mean, rabbit with this and this very likely pregnancy somewhere in your field. You know, if it's not you, then maybe it's your whoever, your best friend, your niece, your nephew, cousin, whoever, you know, somebody. 
But rabbit is also major abundance, not just pregnancy. Sensitive, artistic, clever, nimble, outsmarting adversaries by staying one step ahead, taking colossal leaps and sprinting into the future. Heightened libido and procreation. Yeah, that's the whole thing about the, um, you know, the pregnancy and all that. All right, let's move over to the lots. We're going to start out with the lots of love for our Taurus friends for the month of April. Lots of love. Real. So keep it real. I almost want to say, though, more is like, is this is so good and so much awesomeness. Is it really real? And I'm here to tell you, Taurus, it's real. Okay, you made it real. You manifested it. Okay, let's see here. What else we got? Oh, love is the answer. I kind of skipped over the, the order I usually go. But the, the lots of uh, Proverbs says love is the answer. And that's, you know, that's a good one. And you're definitely going to be in a field of a lot of love at this time, Taurus. Okay. Next says not now. Yeah, but that could be with the strength. So maybe not now. But you definitely, even if it's not now, you have the assurance that it's coming. So for some, maybe it's going to be like, yeah, we're, maybe we're doing this whole thing and it's not going to manifest fully until we get to Leo. For some, maybe even you're building a house or something. And maybe it takes a few months, you know, six months or longer to build the house or whatever. So not now, but so you get the news. You, you know that it's on the horizon. You've getting, you're getting tangible realizations in the actual physical world of something that's really wonderful with this Ten of Cups here, okay? All right, Taurus, well, thanks for tuning in. If you're watching the last week of, of March, you can still get in on the Aries Ingress reading. But other than that, there is other readings on my website. And if you enjoy this content, I do have the weekly readings on Patreon. Okay, next we're going to move on to the sign of Gemini. Hello, Gemini. I had to make a little camera adjustment, and I think the audio might be a little better that my voice is closer and you can see more of the table well gemini's you know you're not directly involved in anything exactly this month but that does not mean that you would not be affected okay everyone is affected by the eclipses the new moon eclipse in aries super powerful for new beginnings manifestations jupiter conjunct uranus also you know bringing luck and surprising and uh the guides are saying in a most delightful way dun, dun, dun. Okay, let's get the three cards for our Geminis. We've got the Judgment, so ending of a karmic cycle. Ace of Pentacles, again, that's new beginning in money. And then an Eight of Cups, again, as well. Moving on to greener pastures. Let's go ahead and get our three cards for our bottom row for our Geminis. One, two, three. We've got the King of Cups, so a person. The Eight of Swords. And the Page of Rods. Okay, so news is coming in the time of fire. You know, you've definitely been through something here. This is... Let's start here. Let's start with the Eight of Rods. Because that's really the only quote-unquote negative, if you want to call it that, card. And this is about really being in your head. Notice she has the blindfold on her head, and she's all stressed out and worried and everything. And Gemini, you can have that tendency you know there's good and bad in every sign but because you're so mental and you're you think you're always trying to think of every angle and you're always thinking 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 this is a time to maybe step back a little bit from the thinking step back from the worry for sure and the guides are saying just let nature take its course just let things take their course because there's some big beautiful thing coming you're ending this big karmic cycle so these repeating patterns that you've been in these are not going to be continuing on during the next, you know, these eclipses make big, bold changes in our lives. So, and this is news coming in the time of fire, which is going to be before we hit the 19th. So while we're still in Aries, we'll be in Aries from the 1st through the 19th, and then the 20th on will be in, or 19th or 20th on Taurus. So in the first part of the month, but I'm sure it's probably, because even he's got that little solar disc on his, on his, so uh, can you see that? You know, so that solar eclipse in air in fire sign of Aries over here on the eighth, and it's next to an eight and above an eight's above it a two. We have that in one of the other readings. So this is you know it is powerful. We know that, but news is coming, or maybe you want to be the one to receive the news. I think whatever you've been stressing about or worry about, you're going to get some news that's a big relief for you. So you've been through this karmic cycle. 
I always want to look and it's pointing down to the King of Cups. Now, I'm not getting the King of Cups is a bad thing at all. I think the King of Cups is the new thing. Like, so, say you've been in a bad relationships in the past. Maybe this is a new love interest. Often the King of Cups, because it's Cups and love energy, can be that regardless of the sign. You know, this is going to be somebody who is a good, uh, you know, a, a positive force in your life on whatever level. King of Cups perhaps can be a water sign, a Scorpio, a Cancer, or a Pisces. But it's really more about the emotional content, the emotional support. Also, we do want to note that we are having the full moon on the 23rd will be in the water sign of Scorpio. So this could be talking about something around the 23rd. I feel like this is a breath of fresh air. I feel like you've been through the ringer and other relationships and you're, you're ready to move on. Some of you, it's in a work situation because the Ace of Pentacles is here. There's definitely a possibility for some kind of new money showing up, some kind of a new job, some new kind of um, monetary opportunities, a gig, you know, whatever you want to call it. And you've been in this old situation for a long time and you're ready to move on. You had something to learn there. Maybe you learned skills, you know, could be job skills even, you know, things that are going to make you, you learned, you know, trades, you know, or skills of, of those sorts that, you know, you learned how to do a certain kind of a job. Now you can do it, you know, anywhere. You have the experience under your belt. You have the experience under your belt no matter what we're talking about here, okay? You have the experience under your belt. You've had to pay some dues. You paid your dues. And now doors are opening. Things are moving forward. And I want to say for some of you, you're really getting some acknowledgement too. I feel like that could totally be a part of you. Getting some acknowledgement. Well, let's get the animal totem. The dog energy. Dog is very positive energy. It's positive, upbeat. It's about um, being part of the group incarnation too. It's finding your pack. Finding your tribe, finding your pack. So whatever you're moving on to, there's going to be this nice feeling when you get there. A feeling of belonging, a feeling of being part of the pack, part of the tribe. Let's read this. Loyal companion, protector, and ally. Well, I get that off of this card big time. Immense capacity for unconditional love. Yes. Service to the pack, group incarnation. To have friends, you must be a friend. Yeah, well, you know, you, Geminis, you always have a lot of friends because you're just so social. Geminis are so sociable, and, you know, you guys are always a lot of acquaintances anyway. Let's put it that way. All right, let's go ahead and get your lots of love. We got split. Yeah, some of you are splitting from something. You're moving on and splitting for something, and this is the new thing that is, the guides are showing me, like, it's being laid at your feet, Okay. Let's get your lots of answers. Oh, that bright sun is coming in. I mean, I'm <laughs> sorry about the lighting effect, but I feel like it's a good sign. It's like the light is shining. Look where he's going. He's going into the light. Let's see here. This is maybe. So that's a maybe. You know, maybe yes, maybe no. <laughs> Let's get our lots of proverb for Gemini for April 24. It says, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Well, that means like, if there's somebody's offering you a solid opportunity, take it rather than wait for a maybe on something else. I feel like for most of you, you guys are going to just be right in there. Like you're just going to really have that whole, um, you know, this is, I don't feel a lot of hesitation about this. I feel maybe a little bit of hesitation and trepidation leading towards it, moving forward, like, oh, am I going to get it? Am I not going to get it? But you're going to get some break. This is going to be a breakthrough news, breakthrough moment, they're saying. Okay. Wow, Gemini, that light is just really crazy, isn't it? Uh, so it's coming in from this window. I'm going to have to hang some more curtains down on the bottom. But anyways, thanks for tuning in. And um, if you're watching at the very, very end of this last week of March, then yeah, you can still get that Aries Ingress reading, which goes over the eclipses and the whole thing and everything. But, you know, I do always have other readings also available on my website. So check it out if you're interested. Now we're going to move on to the sign of Cancer. All right, Cancers, thanks for tuning in. Um, as always, I always remind you when there are these things happening and these cardinal signs, 
you are one of the cardinal signs, so therefore you can be very much affected, maybe even more than some other people might be, um, because of the cardinal cross. I'm not seeing, I bring this up a lot, but maybe somebody's new here and hasn't heard it already. You're Cancer, there's Cancer, Capricorn, Aries, and Libra. Okay, so these eclipses are happening in Libra and Aries, and you know, so you're getting the square, you're getting the action. You can definitely make a big change, a big thing could happen for you at this time. Well, it, there's big things happening for everybody. This is a this is a pinnacle month just for everybody um, on the planet. But let's go ahead and cut some cards and see what's in store for our Cancer friends for the month of April of 2024. Ten of Cups, nice. Three of Rods, nice. And Seven of Cups. Okay, next we're going to do three cards from the Hanson Roberts deck. I'm really trying to get this lighting under control. Let's see if that'll help. <laughs> now we got all the shadows on my hand. I just heard, I'm being followed by a moon shadow. Moon shadow, moon shadow. Mm -mm. Leaping and hopping on a moon shadow. Well, that's you, Cancers. You're the moon child, right? Moon shadow, moon shadow. And if I ever lose my eyes, do 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 oh, e e e e e All right, Cancer, let's take a look. Looks like love is in the in the cards for you as well. It's been quite a few love, big love reading stuff showing up here. So we've got this King of Cups. Now there's no gender in these readings, of course. So, but we've got this King of Cups. So this could be you. You know, because you're the water sign person. But it could also be, I'm getting the feeling for most, this could be some other water sign person. So the water signs are Scorpio, Cancer, and Pisces. This could also be talking about this Scorpio full moon that we're going to be having on the 23rd. Could be something surrounding that. But we got to look. we got the Two of Cups with the Ten of Cups together. So this is some major love energy big time, okay? You are in soulmate, attraction, love energy, vibes okay <laughs> well i think isn't the scorpio moon I mean, yeah it would be if you're if you're cancer rising the scorpio full moon is in your fifth house of love and romance so it could be something cooking there um but there's a lot of happiness and joy in whatever whatever facet if you're not looking for love and this doesn't resonate then check your rising room but it's not ten of cups is not solely about love necessarily it's just about being really really happy it's the most happiness and joy that you can imagine and you've got the three of rods here so that means your ships are coming in you're going to get what you want you've been dreaming it you've been visualizing it and now you're you're seeing it on the horizon you're actually seeing it manifest it's no longer just something of the dreams and the imagination it's coming in you're seeing it manifest this person absolutely, well, I feel like both of these people are absolutely soulmates on whatever level. If it's something about success, more oriented towards success, then these people are going to be the ones that are coming in to help you achieve that success. The guides just said, though, it's a win-win situation. So, yeah, maybe they're helping you get that success, but it's not just because they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart. This is a true team effort. There's a collaboration effort here happening. So, again, it, maybe this is you, then the other person could be an air sign person, an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. This person is also in their positive. It feel, what I want to say, and it, but there's no gender, but it, what I'm hearing is that old expression, this is my right-hand man. So it feels like maybe you're dealing with this person and that person's their assistant or their business partner. Or maybe, again, this is you and this is yours, you know, somebody that's coming in. But there's going to be a lot of collaboration, a lot of help from people, a lot of, um, you know, moving forward with things. Even though the Mercury is retrograde, which is a thing. This might be telling us that this is going to be on after the 25th. And that 25th, when that Gemini, you know, that Mercury... Gemini rules Gemini energy goes forward and bam we're ready to roll but you're not walking this path alone that's for sure cancer you have a lot of love and support and a lot of very positive energy there's not one bad card in this spread okay let's go ahead and get the animal tone for our cancer friends for the month of 
April. I almost said August. And, you know, I almost said August because I looked over here and saw this lion. So there could be some tie into August for some of you. Could be last August or maybe, you know, the following coming up August in a few months from now. You got the goat. As I always say, when the goat comes in, I want to, you know, I want to relate it to somehow to Capricorn energy. So you might be dealing with a Capricorn. Again, we could be talking time frames. This could be something that happened back in Capricorn time, back in late December or January. But here's what the card I wrote initially. Independent, ambitious, rugged, curious, unfaltering perseverance and determination, climbing to new heights, top of the heap, overcoming obstacles, success after hard work. Yeah, definitely success. Success is on this card, and if you look, success is on this card. So you've got the word success two times in the spread. So something is going to be a success. It depends on what your area focuses. If, you know, the family and the love is the best, the most important thing to you, then that's going to be successful. If it's, you know, other things having to do with career or, you know, you know building your legacy, I just heard, then maybe that's going to be, or maybe all of the above, right? All right, let's reach in here and get you lots of love. You said radiant. Oh, yes, you are radiant. You are radiating all this love energy, all these positive vibes. So you are radiant. You'll be radiant in that solar, that solar eclipse, too, that sun energy. Let's get our lots of uh, answers. You have absolutely, absolutely tootly or something. Who said that? Was that some TV character or something? <laughs> if anybody remembers it, you can put it in the comments. Um, if you do put stuff in the comments, I, I enjoy all your comments, and please do hit the thumbs up and all that, but say it. It's for the cancer reading, so we know what we're talking about here. So I can get the reference. I don't have to watch the whole video to figure out what you were talking about. Okay, last but not least, what is the lots of answers? It says, let sleeping dogs lie. Yeah, the past is behind you. New doors are opening. Anytime we get to these time frames where these eclipses are happening, these cardinal energies, we're turning these corners. There absolutely is, you know, some kind of the past. Let the past go. It's funny it fell under this. So for some people, this might be somebody that was, you know, you may be faced with an old love and then a new love, you know. Whatever is new, that's what you're wanting to go for at this time, especially in the sign of Aries. It's the beginning of the zodiac. It's, a, you know, solar eclipse, new 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 moon, new beginnings. So this is a, such a powerful time of new beginnings, okay, for everyone. All right, well, Cancers, thank you so much for tuning in. Check your rising and moon. If you're watching in the very last week of um, March, you can still get in on that Aries Ingress, which covers all, a lot of this astrology stuff. But otherwise, there's other readings available on my website. And I also have the weekly astrology and tarot for all signs on my Patreon page. All right, next let's go on to the sign of Leo. Well, Leo, this is a really powerful, I mean, that thing, that fire energy, that new moon solar eclipse, that's trining you. That's making a trine, that's powerful energy, that's positive flow energy that you can work with to create whatever you want to create at this time. The Jupiter square Uranus is a square, so it could be some surprising turns. It may show you where you have to head into a different direction. The full moon of Scorpio, also a square because you're fixed, fixed energy. I can pull this out real quick. Just like the cardinal cross, there is a fixed cross. There's, there's all, For every element there is. So here's you, Leo. At Leo, Aquarius, Taurus, and Scorpio. This is the fixed cross, okay? So we're going to have the, uh, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction here. Tenth house, if you're, if you're Leo rising, this could be big career stuff. Seventh house, we got Pluto over there. Down here, the full moon in the fourth house. So these are squares, and squares often are turning points where you've got to turn the corner to a new reality is what the guys just said. All right, let's get our three cards for the top row for our Leo for April of 2024. I almost put them back together. Three of rods. We had that in the last one. Page of cups and the death card. Now don't get freaked out about the death card. The death card is just a big change that's meant to happen. I just said where you're changing, you're turning corners. And the death card is Scorpio's card too. So it could be some big change happening when we get to that Scorpio full moon on the 23rd of uh, April. Let's get three more cards for our Leos for the month of April. We've got the Six of Pentacles, some financial rewards. 
We've got the Two of Cups. Two of Cups has been out a lot. And then the Queen of Cups. Water energy. Scorpio full moon again, I dare say. Well, you know, you've got water sign energy a couple places here. You've got the Page of Cups and the Queen of Cups. And there's some soulmate energy. It's connecting. I always look at the card if it's connected exactly next to it, and it is. It's connected exactly one card up and one card over. We've got water sign energy both kind of intersecting here in this soulmate uh, vibration. So maybe around this full moon, maybe some water sign could show up. Uh, water sign, love, soulmate, love energy. But maybe some of you are actually involved in, with a water sign. Now, on just a real rudimentary level, your fire, water, they don't mix, right? But that's not always going to be the case necessarily. You know, maybe you have some cancer, you have your rising sign. There's a lot of variables that would, you know, it doesn't always have to be so set in stone. But there's definitely interaction with people. Again, a lot of love energy exchanging going on. The Two of Cups also, you know, it's not just your lover, you know, your romantic partner, your romantic lover necessarily. The Two of Cups is the soulmate on whatever level. Many people could come in and be a soulmate in your life on a lot of different levels. Um, the Death card is here, so you're due for a big change. Not surprising with all this eclipse and everything that's happening. But again, I almost want to say, you know, the death card is the card of Scorpio. Maybe we're looking at a Scorpio over here. Maybe we're looking at that full moon in Scorpio for you. I definitely see some financial gains for you. You've got your ships are coming in with the Six of Pentacles. So that is, that is receiving those financial rewards, receiving that raise, that promotion, that increase in your money and finances um, to a next level, to the next level. Of, so maybe you're going to get a promotional for promote. I really want to say promotion for many. So you may get that promotion. You may go on to that next level, that next uh, that next pay grade. That's what they're saying. Let's get an animal totem and see if that'll shed some more light here for our Leo friends. What do we got for Leos? We have the spider. That's what a web we what are webs we are weaving. I had a spider woke me up. I am sleeping on my sides and I have my hand like this and I feel this tickly. I'm like, what the hell is going on? And there was a spider, but I had my hands right by my face. So it was like right there. It was like, it was crawling. <laughs> Wah! <laughs> I'm not afraid of spiders, but it kind of, it startled me because I just woke up and there it was right in my face. So I went like that and it was on my sheet and I just brushed it off <laughs> after that. It's like, well, I'm hoping that it's, you know, because spider is such cool energy. Spider is akin to the Wheel of Fortune. It also has to do with writing. So if any of you are writers, maybe you're going to get that book advance or get that royalty payment or something along those lines. Okay, Weaver of Fate, Creator of Life, Patient Builder of Sacred Geometry, Transcending Time and Space, all are joined in the Wheel of Life. Yeah, so there's some major connections with people. All are joined in the Wheel of Life, the Wheel of Fortune, Fate and Destiny. You've got a date with Destiny with this perhaps water sign person, but perhaps somebody that's just coming in. Around that Scorpio moon, we keep coming back to that. I just feel really strong for many Leos. This could be a pivotal day. Well, this whole month is just full of pivotal days and pivotal moments, but strongly on that for the uh, Leo. Oh, we've got bliss for our lots of love. Well, you can't get much better than that, can we? I mean, some of you are going to be over the moon so happy about the developments that are coming in uh, this month. Yeah, this is our next one. We're going to do our lots of answers. For Leo, for April of 2024, for Leo. So surely, the last, lately when that card comes out, surely of course means yes, it's a yes. But some of you might be dealing with somebody named Shirley, spelled, you know, S-H-I-R-L-E-Y. Okay. And then last but not least, our proverb says, better safe than sorry. Hmm. You know, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know really how that, maybe it resonates with somebody out there, but I honestly don't feel how that would tie into the reading. This is not a time to play it safe. Not with the energy that's going on around here. Maybe better safe than sorry. Maybe somebody, maybe you want to have somebody checked out before you get involved with them. If you have suspicions or doubt, maybe you can take that better safe than sorry and use it and apply it to your life. But honestly, based on the cards, I'm not getting a whole big feeling about anything that you need to be cautious about. I feel like it's full steam ahead. 
I feel like a lot of things are happening financially. Love, fate, good. Good stuff here. Okay, Leo? All right, well, thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to check your rising and moon. And if you're watching the very last week of March, you can still get the Aries Ingress reading, but there's a lot of different readings available on my website. And if you like this format with some astrology and tarot, I do have the weekly Patreon for $5.55. You can get four a reading, a reading every week that goes into astrology and all 12 signs and a couple cards too. All right, next let's move on to the sign of Virgo. Well, Virgo, you know, you're in the mix, like everybody else. Of all the transits that are going on, I would feel that the most positive for you is probably going to be this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction on the 20th. That's going to be a night. You're an Earth sign. This is happening in Taurus, an Earth sign. This could bring some luck, surprise, excitement. Uh, let's see here. If you are Virgo rising... <laughs> Let's get it all the way around the wheel. That's going to be up here in your ninth house of long distance travel. You know, you can really have some kind of big aha moment, some moment of discovery, some moments of realizations about some things. But that's going to be really helpful to you. I just picked up, too, some of you out there, maybe you're trying to get, or your kid is trying to get into a school. If you're trying to get accepted into some kind of school or college or something, you could get the word that you're going to get it. Or maybe if some random thing comes out of nowhere, like I, you, like uh, I don't know how they do that. You know, this is my one, my number one pick, my number two. It might be your number three pick, or not the one you're really counting on, but know that it's going to be the right one for you. That that's that's the way you're supposed to go. Don't poo-poo it. Be happy and say, okay, universe, I trust you. I believe what's going to. It's all going to happen for the best, and I trust you. Okay, so the top row, we have Seven of Cups, Four of Swords, and Two of Swords, okay? Next, let's get our bottom row for Virgo. This is for Virgo for April of 2024. For Virgo Sun, Rising, Moon, or anyone with Virgo in their planets. We've got the King of Rods, Fire Sign, Energy, Aries, Eclipse, right? Ooh, look at that, Ten of Pentacles, big money. And the Chariot, Wow. Big success, Virgo. Big, big, big success. Well, you've been waiting. You've been waiting. You've been visualizing. You've been waiting. You've been visualizing. You've been waiting. You've been visualizing. You've been waiting. And now you're going to start to see some things happen. I mean, even though the Mercury's retrograde, I feel like a lot of stuff could be happening this month just because this other stuff kind of trumps that. You know, it's just so much more powerful than these mercury retrograde thing somebody's making a big decision could be you i get the feeling like the decision is coming from somewhere outside of you like somebody else we've got this king of rods here this could be the person okay there's no gender in these readings the king of rods is fire energy leo aries sag that leo is really standing out to me it's funny leo energy has been coming up quite a bit in these readings I'm trying to think if there's something going on now that's going to relate to something happening in Leo or past Leo. But maybe it is just a Leo person. Other than that, though, fire sign energy, here we go. We're talking about the fire sign eclipse. We're talking about the eclipse in Aries on the 8th here, right? So something's coming. This guy's bringing in this money with him. This person is bringing in this money, big money here. Some of you, this could be... This could be maybe some kind of thing that comes up out of the blue with your Jupiter Uranus, like in your ninth too. You could be have an opportunity to move, and maybe they're going to pay you a nice sum, like say, hey, we're going to pay your relocation fee, we're going to pay you, you know, for your place to live and all this other stuff. Maybe for others, uh, it could be like something like. Um, where some developers coming in and you're going to have to, you know, public domain, you're going to have to, we're going to buy your house. But when they, those kind of things happen, when they come in and they want to buy up your house and you don't really have any say in it, they give you a lot. They give you above market value. They give you relocate, same thing, relocation money, all this kinds of stuff. It feels like it's sort of, I mean, some of it could be an inheritance, but it doesn't feel like there's any sorrow attached to this in any way. This feels like the thing that you've been waiting for here. Chariot is the biggest success card, the highest success card in the deck. It's the phoenix rising from the ashes. You know, it does have these little moon beams on it. This deck, he's got those little moon faces on his shoulders. Can we pick that up? See there. 
so it could be one of these, you know, this moon thing. It could be the Scorpio full moon either, because often I will associate this, because of the phoenix, I will associate this with Scorpio. But seeing as how it's your ninth house here, you know, and, and this castle is standing out to the back of me too, and these guys, there's castles here too and behind, you know, it could be an opportunity for you to travel. It could be an opportunity for your castle to buy or sell a home, your castle. Maybe some of you, I mean, I know many people from all over the world watch my videos, but if you're in the States and we're not a place where there is really any castles, although I, there is a couple here and there, I guess there is, but you know, when you go to Europe, that's when you see those big elaborate castles. Maybe you're going to be traveling to Europe and see, see one of those castles. Germany, this one picked up Germany real strong. There's a lot of castles in Germany. I, I got to go to them. I got to see castles in Germany. Um, but when I looked at this, I saw a clock. I heard clockmaker. <laughs> I don't know. Germans probably aren't the leaders of clockmakers anymore, but at one time they were. A lot of, or maybe some famous, maybe it's England, Big Ben, you know, some famous clock somewhere. But anyways, let's see what our animal totem is. Got the frog leaping forward. That's what the frog is. Leaping forward, but also the frog is about these transformational steps, you know, because he starts out as the tadpole or the newt or whatever, and then it turns into this and it turns into that, and then finally it turns into the frog. But the frog with the chariot, I will say, is often travel again because the frog leaps from one, you know, the frogs leap. Because they want to be in the sun. Rainmaker, alchemist, clairaudient, fertility, transformation, metamorphosis, safe passage into the netherworld, the final stages of growth you have arrived. Yeah, with the chariot you have arrived, with the ten of pentacles you have arrived. So you may have been stuck in this never-ending loop of wanting to make something happen, keep working it, keep working it, and bam, this is the month for a lot of people, not just Virgos, but it's shown up in Virgos reading here where it could really finally come into fruition, kind of finally come into manifestation. Let's get the lots of love and see what we get here. This is happy. Yeah, you're just in a happy place here, Virgo. You're doing good. You're happy. I'm hearing, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then you really got to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Wow, <laughs> wow. All right, Virgo, what do you got here for lots of answers? It's definitely, definitely, man. And last but not least are lots of proverbs for Virgo. What do we got here? Be careful what you wish for. Well, I mean, I don't feel like you need to be careful, any more careful than you already are, Virgo. You guys are, if anybody's careful, it's Virgo. Um, but you are super, super, super duper manifestors right now. Dun, dun, super duper. What is that song? Something super duper. I don't know. <laughs> but it's so you're super duper. Sup Virgos are super duper this month. It's going to be a super duper kind of month, Virgo. All right. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to check your rising moon. Uh, if you want to get readings from me, it's on my website. End of March, you can still get that Virgo, th or that Virgo thing, that Aries ingress thing, but there's other readings. And if you like this format where I go through, do a little astrology, and then throw some cards for each sign, I do this on a weekly basis over on Patreon for only $5.55 a month, so check that out if you're interested. Next, let's go over to Libra. Well, Libra, you're in the mix. I mean, the eclipse in your sign is happening. I'm actually doing this a couple days before your eclipse, in March 25th. But it's kicking off the month. We're still under the influence of the Libra eclipse, for sure. We definitely are. You're bringing in that energy. You're ushering in the new month. It's it's all about you. It's all about all your your iconic, you know, representations, love, partnerships, marriage. Um, you know, you maybe you had some major realizations. Maybe some of you, some things were coming to an end that were eclipsed out of your life. And now we're coming into, it'll be up by the 8th, we come, we have the Libra, and then we come to the other part. It's always partner signs, okay? So here's, where's our Libra? I don't, I'm having such a problem with this wheel today, I don't know. So here you are, Libra, so the exact opposite. The first eclipse was in your sign, and then the new moon eclipse on the 8th is going to be in your opposite sign of Aries. So this is all about the other. You know, this is all about you breaking out, breaking free, making those new beginnings, blazing those, being that trailblazer, 
doing that thing that lights you up, lights you on fire. Let's get your three cards here and see what we got. Making a decision. Two of swords. High Priestess, which is another number two. Lastly, we've got the tower. I mean, I'm not surprised to see the tower because of the eclipses in your sign. Doesn't necessarily be a bad thing. You know, it's just a clearing, but let's get three more cards for Libra for April of 2024 for our Libra friends, Sun Rising Moon, or anybody with a lot of Libra placements in their chart. Queen of Swords, very likely you or another air sign person. Four of Rods, moving house perhaps. And eight of Rods, movement, movement, movement. Some of you, some of you are... You might be breaking up. You know, you might be having a breakup. You might be, you know, saying, okay, we're done. I'm going to go look for a new place. i got to move, or they're moving out, and now I'm re redoing the house, whatever it might be. Whatever it is here, tool with the high priestess, you know, you've had an inkling about this. This isn't such a big shocker, I don't feel. The tower can be a big shocker, though. And maybe the shocker was around the eclipse in your sign back on the 25th. So it can be... Uh, you know, it can be some big shocker. But, I mean, you're quickly, like, it's like you're quickly like, okay, let's look at the new house. Let's get things well. You know, you're, you're not wasting any time. This would be you here. You're looking at what's coming next. You know, you're going to move to a new house. There's going to be some changes or improvements in your home that are for the better. More pleasant, more happiness. Um, the guides are saying more jovial. <laughs> jovial, J-O-V-I-L. Jovial. Yeah, that's not my word. So some big decisions are made that have brought about some big turnarounds in your life. And again, I'm not surprised in the least to, to see it with these eclipse energies. Um, you've got the high priestess in here. So there is this element of tuning into your intuition, sensing that true north, sensing that this is the right move for you and that everything's going to be okay. As far as these eclipse cycles go, you might want to think back to last fall, but we've also had these eclipse cycles before, back in 1985, or 2005 and 2006. And then before that, we've had them in 86 and 87, and then even 1967 and 1969. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so that could be... If you are old enough to remember, and most people are going to be remember the 2005 and 2006, of course, it's maybe beneficial to kind of go back and think about those time frames and what actually did go on at those time frames. And how has that changed? How, how has I changed? Whatever that was was happening then has come full circle for you. How am I going to be different going forward? What should I have done back then? And maybe I can do that now. Maybe I missed the boat back then, but now hindsight's 2020, and I can see. You know, using that intuition and feeling, really feeling into it. Okay, let's get your animal totem here at Libra. Let's see what we got for Libra: sun rising or moon. The goldfish. That's this. You know, this one doesn't come out very often, but it's a really good card. Let's read it. Luck, serenity, prosperity, wealth. Fluid imagination, losing track of time, celestial connections, altered states, omens of auspicious developments. Yeah, I feel like some of you, the way these arrows are pointing at it, somebody might be, maybe you're going to have a koi pond in your new place, or maybe there's one around, or maybe there's a... Um, an aquarium near there, or you could walk to the aquarium. Whatever this, you know, with this thing here, I'm getting like it's a walkable neighborhood for somebody out there. Whether it's a walkable neighborhood, you could, there's things to do, walk around. And you're looking forward to it, and you just feel like, it feels like you're just really excited about what the future holds. You're not wasting any time uh, over here worrying about whatever went down with that tower energy. It certainly doesn't seem like it. Okay, let's get her lots of love here. Troubled. Yeah, so this was a trouble. Trouble's gone. All skies are clear. Your path is clear now. Lots of answers. So it's probably. And so chances are good. And then let's get the lots of proverbs. Make hay while the sun shines. It's cool. That, so cool that that showed up right under your eight of rods. Make hay while the sun shines. You know, sun is shining, so all bright, well, not you necessarily, but these are all bright, sunny cards moving forward. 
and make hay while the sun is getting, you know, get moving on, making your plans. Don't, you know, don't be spending too much time with the rear view. It's all in the rear view. It's all behind you. That eclipse did you a favor. It cleared out a bunch of stuff in order to make way for this beautiful new life that you're creating uh, in your next chapter, your next big chapter in life. Okay, Libra? Well, thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to check that rising moon for even more insights. I do have the Aries Ingress till the end of uh, March if you're watching this in March. But if not, you know, on my website there's lots of different readings available. And I do have the weekly Patreon if you enjoy a little bit of astrology and a little bit of, um, not Scorpio, a little bit of tarot. Weekly Patreon. All right, now we're going to move on to Scorpio. Well, Scorpio, it's your full moon this month after all, after the dust settles. <laughs> After all the dust settles from all the chaos and all the... It's a ball of confusion. That's what the world is today. Hey, hey. What is it? Evolution. I just changed keys again. <laughs> it's a ball of confusion. But you get through all that, and then by the time we get to this 23rd year full moon, I feel like there's going to be a lot of clarity, a lot of illumination. Things are coming to culmination, and things are just kind of, I'm feeling like just really kind of in your, you know, uh, the ball's in your court, Scorpio. You are making magic, is what the what the guide said. Scorpios, well, you guys are always making magic, aren't you? Let's see. Four swords, needing some rest, perhaps, after that Libra ingress in your 12th house. Knight of uh, swords, and then finally, the justice card. Okay. Next, we're going to do the bottom row. Three cards for Scorpio, Sun, Rising, Moon, Sun, Rising, Moon, Sun, Rising, Moon, Scorpio. Let's get three cards for Scorpio. Nine of Rods, Two of Rods, and Six of Rods. So this is, you know, these rods are all fire energy. It's interesting to me that we have air, air, fire, fire, fire. And we have, this could even be construed as air because it's like the Libra energy. And I feel that the reason I was bringing that up is I feel like it's, this is all the Libra eclipse, has, you know, it's kicking off the months. It actually, it technically happens in March, but it's the energy of the field of energy as we go into April. It's, it's still in effect. And then we get into the fire energy and boom, 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 things are moving forward that way. So yeah, you may need a rest, Scorpio. This this last eclipse, especially if you're Scorpio rising, you know, it happened in your 12th house. And, you know, that's a house of, you know, dealing with a lot of stuff. And that's your subconscious mind. But often it just means you need a rest. And I'm feeling like that is true. You need a break from the hustle and bustle of life. Um, there is one more thing popping in here. It almost feels like this could even be maybe you have to get your taxes done. You know, maybe you're rush, rushing with this justice because it'd be government and stuff like that. So maybe you know, you or you, your lawyer or whatever, tax lawyer. So you're, <clears throat> excuse me, you're rushing to get this this last bit of business taken care of here, and then by the time you know you're, you're like, okay, what's next? Like you're almost just like, <sighs> um, what's this showing me? What is that? Oh, that movie, that's from that movie uh, with about the runaway, Runaways, the all-girl band from the 70s. Well, this is what they show me. Like, Joan Jett's in, um, they're playing some club and people are throwing beer cans at them and stuff. <laughs> and Joan Jett's, whap, whap, she's batting away with her guitar. That's what this reminded me of. So you're just like, okay, I got that done, I got that done. You know, you've just been so ah, under the gun. And then you're just like, okay, what's next? And then this new moon solar eclipse sits and says, here, here's what's next. Sun shining. There's the solar eclipse, too. they got the sun on here and the sun on here. Clear skies ahead. There's, you know, you, this is handled. There's no more stuff that you're going to have to bat away. Bat, bat, bat. You know, you're, you're, you're just like, ah. You're getting a reprieve. You're getting a break. A, lo a much deserved and long needed break is what I'm getting from uh, this energy here. Um. Yeah, so two of rods, you see your way clear. You've accomplished a lot. You've accomplished a lot, Scorpio. And you see your way clear, and you've got the world in your hand. And you're being rewarded by the universe, too. This isn't just some pipe dream. This isn't just Scorpio saying, oh, yeah, you know, talking out, out of school or talking out your butt, you know. This is Scorpio saying, okay, 
I, I finally I really dealt with all this. This could be stuff that's been hanging on for years for some of you, I feel. And it's just like, whew. Like you can breathe that sigh of relief. And so, okay, I've got that done. I put that to bed. I don't have to deal with it anymore. There's nobody else throwing. I could put my bat down or my guitar down. <laughs> and two of rods, I see the way to clear to the future. I see the way to go. And the six of rods, you're going to have that victory and triumph. You're going to get that acknowledgement. You know, I do feel like this could very well. The other thing is because sixth house for Scorpio is Aries. Sixth house. Okay, and that's the the Aries energy on the, the new moon solar eclipse. What's this? It's solar. That's why I'm saying you know it's a, it's a new moon, but it's solar. It's a solar eclipse. That's why that sun energy was so you know pronounced or standing out to me. You got the world in your hand, and you're going to get some acknowledgement pretty quickly. You know, you're going to get some outside world validation. Okay, and you're going to be you know you you dealt. There's a lot of stuff you have. that's you know that's Scorpio. That's Pluto. You got to go down that underworld and deal with all the crap, and then it's a new day, a new day is dawning here, okay? All right, you know, that was crazy that that, that thing showed up in my vision. Of the, I haven't seen that movie since it first came out, and that's been years already, at least a good five, five or more years. And they just showed me that, that vision of that scene there. Okay, but anyways, back to this. Let's get your animal tone for Scorpio the Wasp. Yeah, I think the wasp is more about a lot of this stuff. That you have to deal with that stinging. You know, the wasp has the stinger, and also, um, you know, the scorpion has the stinger. So there is a little bit of crossbreeding or cross pollination there. Fearless warrior spirit of the sky, shamanic healing, transformation, stinging, attacking, fighting the good fight, impassioned action makes dreams come true. Yeah. That's the highest expression of that wasp energy. Nice. I think you're finally turning a corner, and that full moon is really going to also. You could look at it's so it's sun, it's solar, but we could look at that as that full moon illuminating your path too. You know, I definitely would. Okay, lots of love. It says join, join together with the band. Come on and join together. Yeah, join together. Everybody join together with the band. That last line isn't right uh, melodically, but um, I think it's the who, isn't it? Anyways, let's get the next card. Um, not card, but this one. It says, certainly. 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 Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> you do the curly shuffle. Oh, oh. Hey, Mo. Hey, Mo. Lots of proverbs for Scorpio. The early bird catches the worm. Well, you know, I, I mean, that could be like, oh, I got to be the early bird. You can, you could take it that way. Like, oh, I got to, you know, make it a stressful thing. Or you could take it as you are the early bird. Here's the sun is rising. You are the early bird. You're the first one or one of the first ones. Or you are laying the groundwork or paving the way. The guys are saying you are paving the way for others to follow. Nice. And Scorpio, you can be that trailblazer too. After all, I mean, your ancient ruler is Mars. And that's going to be the ruler of this solar eclipse and everything. So you do have some sort of an affinity with the Aries energy in a weird way. Okay. All right, Scorps, well, thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to check that rising and moon sign. Uh, if you enjoy this type of reading, I do have a Patreon uh, place where for $5.55 I do a weekly every also similar to this but just a little shorter we go over the astrology and we do cards for each sign all right sad let's get rolling with your reading you also are totally you know vibing with this eclipse like everybody else uh you are another one of the fire signs though so this new moon eclipse in aries could be very that's again some nice energy that you can absolutely work with it's in a harmonious trine you can harness the power of it and able to, I was hearing, they're telling me, able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Sagittarius. <laughs> okay, Sag, let's get your, let's get your three cards out for Saggies. Three Rogers ships are coming in. Wheel of Fortune, cool. And the Ten of Pentacles, wow, Sag. You are you are really working with that, aren't you? You are up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. They keep telling me that. 
Wow, it's a Superman. Maybe, maybe some of you are going to see some crazy. I saw an eagle for the first time. Well, not the first time ever, but the first time ever at this place that I always go to channel. It was really cool. And it was flying. Well, this bunch of seagulls were mobbing it. You know, they're, they're, that's what drew my attention. And I look up and it's an eagle, a bald eagle with the white head. And it was, she, I have never seen it this spot ever. Um, and then it was flying, and I was watching it and watching it. I kept soaring higher and higher. And then there was two other eagles up there. Uh, I, I assume they were eagles. There was two other birds that joined it. It was almost out of sight. It was so far up that it was so almost out of sight. And then those two disappeared. And the other one stayed for a while, going in a circle, the original one, because I could see him clearly. And then it it went so high, it, like it just disappeared into the atmosphere. And I was just like, wow, you know, mind blown. I was just so so honored to have had that visitation but i was just so wow and look at look what's oh dang look what's on this card too eagle look at that this is a golden eagle but yeah so i mean you are i was soaring ever higher yeah you'd be soaring ever higher this month sagittarius big time with the wheel of fortune ten of pentacles wow um, it's showing up with some air sign energy here, which we don't really have a lot of air sign energy. I'm trying to think, maybe it's something having to do with this Mercury retrograde, then the Mercury goes direct, because that's a air sign connection here. Um, news coming in the time of air. I mean, we might, I usually try to keep it to this month, but we might be looking into next month for you, for when we go into Gemini here. So we've got this double air energy, or even the, maybe the Gemini new moon. Aren't we going to have a, well, obviously we'll have a Gemini new moon at some point. Let's see when that's going to be. That would be, um, well, it's not going to be even until June. Well, I'm not going to worry about it right now, but just keep that in mind, that this might be a little bit, you know, going forward. Uh, but definitely by the time we hit Taurus after the 19th with the, the Earth sign energy, a lot of these things are going to be in place. You'll at least be standing on solid ground, know where you stand, know where, that this project is underway or this opportunity is underway and you could see your success on the horizon and this is going to be maybe bigger than anything you've ever done before Sagittarius or definitely way up there way up there in the top three at least as far as you know monetization or the money involved or maybe there's some big sponsor or backer or I just feel like people are getting behind you on this, whatever it is. You've got support. You've got the people behind you. You've got the help. You know, and Wheel of Fortune, it's your time. Think of the stars are aligning. Um, what is that? Shabab, shabab. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> They're giving me the shabab, shababs. All the stars out tonight. I don't care if it's cloudy or bright Cause I only have eyes for you, dear Shabab, shabab! <laughs> well, I mean, hey, maybe some big love energy. You've got plenty of choices here if, if we're talking love. Typically, this is more about, this and this is more about, like, you know, if, uh, big success and financial dealings and whatever but you know wheel of fortune it's fate and destiny on all levels maybe some of you are going to be involved with an air sign person this could be aquarius gemini libra because i was picking up the gemini so strong and because gemini here's sagittarius right gemini is your natural partner maybe you're going to be dealing you know uh, in a relationship with a gemini maybe it's not the timing maybe it's the person here Whatever the case, you know, you are just riding that wave. You are on top of the world. You are riding that wave. Things have definitely taken a turn for the better. There's going to be communication going on. Maybe this is something that is going on now, but that the, the success continues as we move forward into May and June and beyond. I wouldn't be surprised with the way this whole setup thing is here. It looks fabulous. I mean, just really fabulous. And you've got people on your side. Could be a team of three, too. And I looked at this three of rods, and we've got those two. Or this person, but really I was thinking those two and then you. You know, that would be the third component, the third um, leg. They're talking about the third leg of your journey. So for some of you, well, you know, when I think of the third leg of your journey, I think of the second Saturn return. If any of you are of the age where you're going through your second Saturn return, which would be late 50s to around 60, you know, that's the third leg of your journey. You know, your third act. 
or or um, you know I, use, I always use the reference if you're a feminine it's made in mother crone you know you're stepping into that third some of you may be not for everybody of course but it could be the third leg of your journey and doesn't have anything to do with your age at all you know maybe you're in your 20s and you're, you're heading on the third leg of your journey let's get your animal totem for Saggies we got the dolphin high vibe and energy with the dolphins man this is some higher dimensional energy. This could even be kind of ET and energy and stuff like that. But this is major air energy. Like what I was, the story about the whole, and look at even this, oh, I didn't even catch that on this card. Look. So I was talking about the eagle and it, the three birds. And it's joined by the three birds. There's three birds up here. That's about what my view looked like when they were all up there in the steel. I couldn't really make them out. The only reason I knew this one was an eagle because it flew right by me before it went up there. But then here's the three birds, the three rods, you know. So there's three. Three is significant, and it's going to be different for everybody. Okay, but dolphin is very higher dimensional, very high vibe and energy, okay? Optimist, clairaudience, spirit guide, starseed. Joyous interactions of fun and play, sexuality, caring for those less fortunate, embracing personal freedom, respecting others' choices. Yeah, respecting others' choices in the fact that they don't have to come along, you know. Come along if you can. Ba, 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 ba. You don't have to come along. You soar, you do you, Sagittarius. You soar to those highest, as high as you can go. Don't let anybody... You know, don't let those, <laughs> those seagulls mess with you and kill your vibe or kill your energy. You do you, because you're about to soar to great heights, it looks like, here, Sagittarius. Student. Well, this could be a student. Some of you, if you're in school, maybe it's student thing, and that could be the student, too. This is the apprentice, actually. You know, the pages are the apprentice sort of students. Um, I always use them as messengers. All the young dudes carry the news, but... They, t they really are these the student, the journeyman, you know, they're the apprentice. Um, yeah, but um, if you're in school or you're a teacher, maybe that student thing could be part of this whole scenario here. That could be the relationship, okay? Let's see here. It says never. Ooh. Well, never. Maybe they're never going to come along, and if they're not, don't let, it don't let it stop you. That's what I'm getting, okay? And then finally... Out of sight, out of mind. But it's so... I'm going to go back to this one more time. Out of sight, because that's what happened. They soared so high into the mist that I couldn't even see them anymore. You know, even with my strong readers. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't matter. They, were just, they disappeared out of this realm of existence. You know, that's what it, that was what, the way I took that message. You know, you, you're just... You're, you're changing into another reality. Um... They can they can touch the earth and come back and you know be in this reality and others might be in this reality but they're of another plane, they're in another echelon of existence. Okay, so with the dolphin and all this high vibe and you know stuff, this is some really cool stuff. You could be reaching new heights and the money could be like never before. That's for sure for many Sagittarius's. Okay, all right everybody. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget about rising moon. Check them all. This is a lot of energy going on this month. And if you like these readings for $5 a month, $5.55, I have the weekly Patreon, uh, which is uh, astrology. And then I go through and throw cards, you know, briefly for all 12 signs. I do it every week. So that might interest you. Check it out. You got all that Ten of Pentacles. You could swing it, right? <laughs> I'm kidding. All right. Let's move on next. We're going to move on to the sign of Capricorn. Well, Capricorn, you're another one. You are part of the Cardinal Cross, as I always point out when we get these Cardinal things popping up here. So this whole thing, you're Capricorn Cancer, Aries, Libra. This is, you're in the mix. The Aries eclipse, the Libra eclipse kicked off the month of, of started the last month at the end, but it's it's influencing the first part of this month. And the eighth, so it's making these squares. So squares make things happen. Squares turn corners, change direction. Um, and then with the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction too, that is really sweet for Capricorns too. Um, it's a nice trine energy if you're Capricorn rising. It's down there in your fifth house of love, romance, fun, games of chance, children, amusement. So really, really cool stuff popping there. And even the Scorpio energy, that's a beautiful sextile as well. So 
I mean, the square of the eclipse thing is the square, but the other stuff is really kind of nice for you, uh, Capricorn. It could work out very nicely for you. Let's have, let's have a look. Okay, there's a little piece of fuzz there. Let's do this. Okay, you've got the High Priestess tuning into your intuition. Eight of Rods. That card's been out a lot. It's interesting into the Magician. It's interesting that this card's been out a lot when we have a Mercury Retrograde. Because this is a card saying, take action, go, 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 send those messages, do that Mercury stuff. And it's Mercury Retrograde, so it's interesting that that card has been out quite a bit um, this month for many people. Let's get our bottom row for our Capricorns from the Hanson Roberts. We've got four rods, maybe moving or changes in your home. Ten of rods, carrying that heavy load. And then the sun card, beautiful, beautiful energy. The sun is one of the best cards in the whole deck, but we can't overlook that it's probably talking about the solar, solar, sun, get it? <laughs> solar eclipse could very well be, have a big connection there. Well, it's going to be for everybody, like we said. Two of rods, trust that intuition. This is a time for you. You've got the one and the two. You know, these are the first two major arcana. So this is the beginning of a journey that you're on. But you're going to be blazing your own pathway, your own... Tra you, well, you are a trailblazer too, Capricorn. You're not one to really give that much credence to what everybody else thinks about you. You are. You are making stuff happen all the time. You are the magician. You are making that magic happen. But at this time, it's kind of like, don't you don't need to really be checking in too much with what everybody else thinks. It feels like there's an element of going against the grain with this, okay? It feels like there's an element of, this doesn't make sense. I don't know why, but my gut is just telling me that I need to do this thing. And maybe you got you to gotta at least give it a, a chance. Even if it's, a, it's, you know, of course you don't want to do anything drastic because of a, a psychic reading on YouTube, you know. <laughs> but, um... And especially a general reading for, to boot, but um, there's something that you just have this feeling, you have this inkling, you have this knowing, this inner knowing that this is for you. The universe is saying this is for you. Now here's another eight. So we might begin talking about that eighth of that new moon eclipse. It might come to you. So it's like, I know what I'm going to do now. I know what I have to do. I know where I'm going. And you're going to put all your effort. The magician doesn't need anybody else to help him out. I mean, it's always nice to have help, for sure. But the magician doesn't need any help. He's got all the elements on his table here. He's got everything he needs to forge that trail and do that thing. Do that thing. Four rods could be some changes in your home, whether you're moving. Uh, maybe some of you, there could be a, a wedding or a marriage coming up. A lot of happy times. Maybe there's going to be an addition to the home. Maybe a, a new baby or hear news of a pregnancy. Maybe somebody's been working real hard. You've been working real good. I mean, hello, Capricorn, working real hard, of course. You know, Capricorns are working real hard. But this card, if you look closely, especially on this deck, which used to be my main deck that I used all the time um, before I made my own deck, he's almost there. He's just almost there. He's at the, he, His goal is within reach. He's at the end of the journey. This is the tail end of this journey. This long and arduous journey that you've been carrying this heavy st stuff around. And you're going to get there. You're going to get to that beautiful castle. Look, it's the castle's on here and the castle's on there. So that castle, yeah, it could be this new home that you've been wanting. I know I've been wanting for a long time. I'm a Capricorn sun. Or, but maybe whatever that castle represents to you. You know, it might not be a new home. Maybe it's the castle of whatever. It could be a lot of different things. But it's within your grasp. It's within your reach. You can make it down those last few steps there. You've come this far, Capricorn. You can do it. All right, and then the sun energy is just shining that light on you, blasting you with that positive sun energy, that new moon solar eclipse. But I mean, again, all this other stuff is really, really harmonious with Capricorns. You guys should be able to make use of this energy in a real positive way. The universe is working with you, trying to help you, trying to give you those insights so you can help yourself with the magician, okay? Also, one more thing about that. The magician walks alone. He walks alone, too. This guy's walking alone, too. So, let's go ahead and get the animal totem for our Capricorn friends. We've got the possum. Yeah, the possum is kind of like the hangman. It's something, it's a very spiritual card. When you have the two of uh, the high priestess over here, and you have the opossum, you know, take that time to check in with yourself. You know, some, I mean, I'm real spiritual, and many Capricorns are, but some are not. Some are more nose to the grindstone, and 
I imagine if you're watching this video, you at least are somewhat spiritual or open to it, right? But check in with that intuitive self when you get these two cards like, cornering off the reading here. Check in with those intuitive hunches. Check in with your inner guidance before, you know, rushing in. I don't see you rushing in, but you know what I'm saying. That's gonna, There's going to be messages coming to you at this time. Dreamer of dreams. Seer of visions. Pause. Create space for enlightenment. Breathe. Keep your plans and ideas private. Know when to assert yourself and when to play dead. Yeah, this is goes that whole thing about private. This is something you're working on for yourself. Maybe on by yourself, but it's for yourself. So, you know, just keep it at private just because people's energy, some people are just so screwy. I mean, they just they think by you know, holding you back or spewing negativity towards you that that's going to help them in some way. And, I think they got it all kind of wrong there, but let's take a look here. What do we got? Socialize for Capricorn. So stay by yourself or socialize. <laughs> well, if you're socializing, mum's the word, they just said. You know, loose lips sink ships, they're showing me. <laughs> so socialize, but, you know, this, whatever this, this dream of yours is, this pet project that you're getting ready to launch or you're, you're thinking about, let's not, let's not spill all the energy out of it. So, unknown on there. You're not getting a, a solid answer on your thing. You're going to have to go within your own intuition to find some of these answers. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. Once bitten, twice shy. Yeah, I mean, some of you have been screwed in the past, haven't we all? I mean, isn't that life, you know? We get screwed over, or things go wrong, you know, that, that happens. Poop happens. <laughs> yeah, stuff happens, but, you know, maybe that's why some of you are saying, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to fall for that again. I'm going to do this all on my own. And that's that's a Capricorn thing, too. I mean, we always have to reach out for help when needed, but at this stage of the game, I feel like kind of, go, kind of flying solo might be best for many Capricorns out there, okay? All right, so that's the end of this uh, chapter. If you want to check your rising and moon, there's going to be more insights and information there, of course. And you can always check my website on how to get readings or about the decks and different things I offer. If you like this format, I do offer it on a weekly basis uh, for Patreon peeps, so check that out if you're interested. You can find those links through my website or through the description below. All right, Aquarius, you're next. Well, you're right in the mix, too, here. This is fire energy. It's sextiling. You just came off of that Libra energy, which was a nice trine for you. Um, also, you are air sign, but also that Pluto is still sitting there at that zero, air, uh, zero Aquarius in your sign. Zero or one degree. So you're still holding that energy of, of the Pluto. you still got that Pluto energy in your sector. Therefore, you have a lot of power. You're wielding a lot of power. You're getting acclimated to the next 20 years of what Pluto can do for you and how you can interact with that Pluto energy. And these eclipses and all these things that are coming up, the Jupiter Uranus, these things will show you and shed light on that for you. Let's get our first three cards for Aquarius. Three or That card has been out a lot, too. Queen of Cups, Water Sign Energy, maybe the Full Moon of Scorpio, and the Star Energy. I love stars. Stars is just one of the most beautiful, wonderful cards. I just love it. All right, let's go ahead and get the three more cards for Aquarius. Star is actually your card, too, now that I come to think of it, in the uh, tarot. It's the, uh, there's major arcanas. There's, oh, look at this, Ace of Rods and World. Each of the major, well, each, and, and then the Moon, too. The major arcana cards... Uh, each astrology sign is associated with one of the major arcana cards. And the one that you are associated with is the star card. That squares this uh, major arcana card. But wow, you have some great stuff here. You've got the star with the Scorpio in it. Well, with the water sign energy. Could be Scorpio, Cancer, or Pisces. And I was feeling real strong about this being that full moon Scorpio. And you have the moon card here to boot. So there's another, you know, thing to point us that. But... We got you know the eclipses. We got the new moon and the eclipse and everything. So powerful time, powerful turning points. I get the feeling like by the time we hit that Scorpio full moon here, that your ship is going to be coming in. Something that you planted the seeds for. Perhaps something that you're planting the seeds for all the way over here on the Aries new moon eclipse. Fire sign Aries. This is rods is fire. 
planting that seed, because that's a powerful time to plant the seeds. We do want to plant the seeds on this April 8th, okay? Planting those seeds, and then it's blooming and growing into, and it's, it's tripling. It's multiplying. It's becoming more. The initial seed planted here, and it becomes more as by the time we get to the end of the month where we see the Scorpio full moon. Whatever the case, you know, star is your spirit guides and angels are just raining down blessings on you. You've got that moon card. That's a, Working with these new and full moon energies are going to be real powerful for you no matter what this month. And then you have the world here. The world is just fantastic. One of the best cards in the deck. Star is one of the best cards in the deck as well. You got three, three out of six are major arcana cards here. You got star, moon, and the world. So there's higher forces at work. The star is telling us that, and it's showing in the reading. And the world is just you opening up to the magnificence of life. That's what the guides are saying. I mean, it's big, big stuff beyond your expectations. Here you're going to get plant your seed. Here you're going to see what you see, what you wanted. You come, you see it coming. But little do you know, almost, that there is this bigger plan, this bigger agenda, this bigger uh, realms of possibilities that the universe can see that we can't really see from our vantage point. So wow, banner, banner month for you guys. Big, big strides, big, big accomplishments, changes, wonders, wondrous glories. Or is it Wondrous Stories? They said Wondrous Glories, but isn't there a song called Wondrous Stories? Yes, I think there's a song called Wondrous Stories. I can't, I can't pull it out of my brain. But he told me his Wondrous Stories or something. Well, anyways, let's get your animal totem for Aquarius. The peacock. Look out, Aquarius. Talk about people noticing you. Getting attention. The peacock is not uh, a wallflower, okay? The peacock is putting yourself out there, shaking that tail feather, showing what you've got. Beautiful. Flamboyant, elegant, proud, and sacred. Death, resurrection, immortality, the phoenix risings. Adding color to your personal style. The spotlight is on you. Strut your stuff. Yeah, all this reference to the phoenix rising and death, that all goes back to the Scorpio energy, too. That's all very much in the realm of Scorpio. That full moon, I get the feeling for many Aquariuses. For many Aquariuses, this Scorpio full moon may be even more powerful than some of these other transits that are going on. Or that could be where you really see the fruits of your labor, or you really see things really coming into culmination. All right, well, let's get the animal, uh, not the animal totem, the lots of love for Aquarius. So serious. So, yeah, somebody, if you're looking for a relationship, then this would say that this could be a serious relationship. Also, I want, because it falls by this ace of rods, I want to say be serious about your manifestations. Don't just blow it off as, oh, yeah, I do these stupid things and nothing ever comes of it. Really get serious on this uh, solar eclipse. And like, really get serious. What do I want to attract in my life? What am I manifesting? Okay, it says because it's plausible. And then finally, we're going to grab the lots of proverbs for Aquarius. Lots of proverbs for Aquarius. Uh, stitch in time sta saves nine. So that means do it right the first time. Okay, do it right the first time so you don't have to go back and do corrections and all this kind of things. Or, you know, a lot of times you know you'll do something and you're like, oh, I'll fix it later. And then when you get into get into it later, it's like, oh man, I should if I would just fixed it back then, it would have been so much easier. You find those little mistakes, you find those little things, get it right the first time. I saw sod here. I saw sod, which is. Um, sod like dirt so maybe some of you're going to plant a garden you know that's the way i think of sod but then i saw it like sol which is blank out of luck if you ever heard that old expression so i don't i'm not getting that from you but if that did come up for somebody or i feel like the sod even is like a, a, an abbreviation so maybe it's somebody if you're starting a company or something maybe sod is like your you know, well, you know, or all bands that have multiple names end up being abbreviated. You know, like STP, Stone Temple Pilots, you know. Um, of course, I can't think of another one right now. But, you know, it might be a name of a, you know, a company or a name of a, something you're going to be doing. Maybe you're going to, that'll be the initials of it. S-O-D. But I saw it S-O-L, too, which means, you know, blank out of luck. But whatever. <laughs> 
let's, uh, this is the end of that uh, reading, and I appreciate you checking it out. Do remember to check that rising moon because you're going to maybe get further insights through there. And if you like this, uh, my type of reading style, I do have weekly readings on Patreon each and every week for all 12 signs. We review the astrology and then we pull cards for each, each sign. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to move on to finally the sign of Pisces. Well, Pisces, you know, you're in the mix as always. If you're Pisces rising, that new moon solar eclipse is going to be in your second house of money. And then the uh, Jupiter Uranus is going to be in your third house of communication. And then the Scorpio stuff will be what? In your ninth house up there. But, you know, the Scorpio energy, well, the Jupiter Uranus and Taurus is really nice, uh, very compatible with your vibration. It's, you know, it's earth and water. And then the Scorpio stuff is um, also very compatible with your Piscean stuff. So... You know, you've got some nice things to work with here, too. You know, you're, you're, this is compatible. There's a nice um, energetic exchange for uh, many Pisces, okay? Let's go ahead and get three cards for Pisces. Let's kick off the reading for April. Got the death card, probably talking about the Scorpio stuff. Don't get freaked out. Three of rods again. That card has been out. And the Ace of Rods. Breaking through that barriers, new beginnings. Okay, three more cards for Pisces for April. One, two, three. Sun card, that was also out just here recently, maybe even the last reading, I'm not sure. The lovers. Ooh, ooh la la. <laughs> what the what? <laughs> Where'd that come from? <laughs> My guide said, ooh la la. Okay, Pisces. <laughs> something I would never ever say okay <laughs> it was not me all right so <laughs> first cut out is the death card so that's you know that's big changes which is you know we're in the throes of the eclipse season all the stuff's going down big changes are definitely happening but I kind of again want to say this it might be a little bit more talking about that Scorpio full moon you may see your ships coming in here as we had in that Scorpio full moon you may see the success of all the stuff um, that you've been working towards. And you've got this Ace of Swords here too, so major victory. See, this is a card here of something that's been taken away or an empty victory or something like that. I feel like this is you being triumphant over this kind of stuff, okay? Like you coming through um, victorious... Um, breaking through the barriers, coming out of this low vibrational, low paradigm stuff. Low paradigm, is that a thing? But this lower vibration of, I'm going to, you know, I need to compete and take what's mine, or, you know, this conflicts and all this stuff, and you're just going to be like, you know what? I'm just going to bust out of this whole thing, and whatever is mine is going to come to me. I can see it. I can see it in my mind's eye. I know it's on the horizon, whether I can see it or not. You are definitely going to be attracting some love energy, though, for sure. The sun being here anyway. That could be the solar with the sun, the solar eclipse. Okay, yeah. But the sun, if we take it out of the context of the astrology for a second here. The sun energy is very much about you're shining, you're glowing, you're emitting all this positive mojo, juju energy. And you're attracting love to your life. Whether that love is, um, you know, a lover. Because a lover is, you know, typically more of, along those lines of relationship, sexual, those kinds of things. Romantic partnerships. But if love, you could be attracting love in a lot of different ways. You know, maybe through friendships. Maybe through, maybe there's a new baby coming into the picture. And that's where the love energy is coming through with. Um but you're definitely attracting it, okay? And I feel like through love transcends all. That's what the guides just told me. So through this positive love energy, you can transcend all this. This is, feels just kind of like ugliness, you know? This kind of really low vibration, yucky, okay? <laughs> it's yucky. And this is ooh la la. <laughs> it just kills me. Ooh la la and yucky. Oh, let's get our animal tone. I was jumping ahead to the lots. But, you know, this Ace of Swords being right on top of there, this is you breaking free of that kind of stuff. And, you know, Saturn wants you to, to take that next step into the more mature role of your life and everything. And at the time of... Um, I'm not sure here, but definitely leading into the month, you, Venus and Saturn are together in your sign. 
So that's attracting that. That could be attracting a very long-term love relationship of, of whatever nature, you know. Okay, let's see here. And if it's a new baby in the family, then that would be a long-time love affair, right? All right, gentle, dear. So that's talking, you know, that's saying here, dear is all about being really gentle, okay? And that's saying here, you can transcend this and be victorious over it without, you know, um, without being aggressive or without, you know, not operating on that same old paradigm kind of vibration. More just, you know, I'm going to raise my vibration, therefore this doesn't trouble me or I will not be embroiled in any of this anymore. I am rising higher into this new vibration. Um, here's the dear energy. Gentle, peaceful, sensitive soul. That's you, Pisces. That's your nature anyway, right? Loving persuasion realizes desires. Pay attention to your surroundings ready to act in an instant. Quiet introspect reveals the answers you seek. You know, I just see the way that it's looking, it's looking over here like there's just love in, in the air, love in your eyes. Love will conquer all. Love will transcend all this kind of stuff that's going on. This feels, you know, this could be what's eclipsed out of your life, you know. Or maybe it won't be eclipsed out of your life, but you're you're putting your attention on it, or you interacting with it, or you being involved with it in any way. It's just like, you know what, I'm going to get on the love train, and you guys can have your bitter, petty arguments over here. I, I'm, I'm going to, and I'm going to la, ooh la la town. <laughs> I'm going to the land of ooh la la. All right. What's our, <laughs> our lots of love? Lots of love. It says, friend. Yeah, so it could be through a friendship. I just noticed a little bit of scruff or something on this card. I just want to wipe it off because I won't remember to do it later. Oh, it's still there. There we go. Got it. Friend. So, friend, like I said, could be friendships. Or if you're looking for love, maybe you could meet um, love through a friend. Uh, or maybe you need to so not associate people who aren't your friend, you know. Friends, so-called friends, you know, maybe you, you got to find some truer friends to be associated with. You got a doubtful here. I feel like that's, if you think that this is going to change or whatever, I don't think it's going to change. You know, you have to change. Be the change you want to see in the world. You know, that's the thing here. Let's get your lots of thing. It says, don't cry over spilt milk. Yeah, leaving this behind is for your highest good. Could be a really big change, though, for some. I know I was laughing it off because that ooh la la thing just cracked me up so much. But, you know, it could be a pretty big change, and it's not surprising during eclipse season that we are, there will be big changes. You know, that, that is indicative of eclipse season, you know, without exception, pretty much. Um, but you are not going to, well, I'm going to get a bigger army, and I'll make them pay, and all this kind of junk. You know, you're just like, you know what, you can have that. If it means that much to you, take it. Because that's, that's one way that the universe will tell us. You know, it's just like, well, if it means, I've said that many times, you know, if it means that much to you, go ahead, it's all yours, you know. I'm not going to get um, embroiled in this kind of crap. You know, I'm definitely not anymore. You know, I have, I'm, I'm living my higher soul purpose. That's what my focus is. That's where I want to go. And I think Pisces, you know, many of you are very much, you know, advanced spiritual souls anyway. You are twelfth house sign of the zodiac. You are the the spiritual master of the of the zodiac. So I feel like a lot of you probably can relate to that. And you know, there might be a good philosophy for you to take at this time, especially because Saturn's in your sign. Okay. All right. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to check your sun rising and moon to get more insights. If you like this uh, kind of thing. I do have a weekly version of it on Patreon. You can sign up for that if you'd like this kind of format. And uh, if you're watching in the very last week of March, I do have the uh, Aries Ingress still available for one more week, which is the astrology reading that covers all this stuff. The Jupiter, Uranus, the whole spiel, okay? But um, after that, it's not available. But thanks so much for tuning in. Remember, you guys are love and beauty incarnate. Have the best month ever, and I'll be back again soon. Bye.